Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Plenty with Sulo. Our venue partner, Department of Coffee, clothing partner, G Flock, hair and makeup salon Tobe by Michelle Udugama. Be tuned to Daily Mirror Online. Another discussion with Plenty with Sulu. Today, our guest is Pubudu de Soisa, Rotary International, District Governor for Sri Lanka and Maldives 2022 and 2023. Rotary brings together a global network of 1.2 million volunteers of more than 35,000 Rotary clubs in over 200 countries and regions dedicated of tackling the world's most pressing humanitarian challenges. A chartered civil engineer, De Zoisa, has been actively involved with Rotary for nearly two decades. She, was, she has been a member of Rotary Club of Colombo since December 2010. Hello, Pubudu. Welcome to Plenty with Sulo. Hi, Sulo. How are you doing? Great. And this is just an informal discussion. So sure. we have 20 minutes. Sure. And we are going to have a journey with you personally, your Rotary journey, and also the society and the corporate. So before we proceed with your role as a governor in Rotary, just do an introduction about Pubudu. Okay. I would like to say who Pubudu is. A very shy girl, uh, very focused on education, very timid, uh, but turned into a very active, very much a corporate person. How I, my life started, I am actually from down south, a village called Kosgoda in Gaul district. I went to Dharmasaka College, Ambalanguda, for my full education. And I selected to the engineering faculty or civil engineering to complete at Moratua. My family, my late father and late mother are my role models, especially my father, who is actually given me the light of the education and also the discipline, which I believe, which I have today, thanks to my father, who is the late captain, Sani Sandy Soisa. My mother was a postmistress. I had three siblings. Uh, elder brother uh, is a marine engineer. Uh, sister is a teacher and brother is a, younger brother is a businessman. And I'm married to Krish Fernando, who is actually, who was not in Sri Lanka for long years, came back to Sri Lanka and settled down with me in, uh, since 2010, now working for Ministry of Tourism. So this is my education and how I came, very humble beginning of my, from South. From South to Colombo and now into international. Sure, thank you. <laughs> so... Before we proceed with your Rotary, as I said, I want to know the background because now you're attached to health ministry, but you're a corporate career and you came from a Sri Lankan education system, uh, went to a Sri Lankan state university, then joined to corporate multinationals, now working with government. How do you see this connect? Because there are so many complaints that there is a gap between private sector and government but here a person who's bridging that gap. Thank you, Sulo, once again. Um, actually, I wanted to add you, yes, my education is fully funded by all of you, the taxpayers in this country, and I'm so thankful, and I know uh, that that's one thing that I uh, praise Rotary. It's the only organization gave me the opportunity to pay it back at least 1% of what I got, got it from all of you. Uh, my education actually consists of uh, higher education, also again from Sri Lanka. I never studied abroad. My MBA from University of Colombo. I did CIMA. I'm a final, past finalist. I did CIM. Uh, you know, banking. You know, it's a mix of everything. I think that gave me a lot of exposure, Sulo. As a, as a person, uh, being an engineer, you can analyze. You can actually think of what's happening. However, exposed to the world, marketing, finance, administration is very important. So I believe my education on the second, other education aspects helped me to do that. So I started my career, started, uh, you know, I think I was 23, if I'm not mistaken, or 24, as a civil engineer uh, at Finco uh, Engineering Sales. Worked very hard. It's like starting at 6 o'clock in the morning till late 12 midnight during the World Trade Center construction time. Heavy exposure, working with more than 70-odd multinational people, you know, 
building was a Singaporean architect was a uh, UK official, the contractors from US, you name it, all the nationals were there. I was the only lady engineer. It was a okay. heavy challenge, but it's so experienced. I mean, I never, and I always tell young engineers, you must work. You must not get out of when you get out of from the uni. You must work and get that exposure. I think my salary was very, very, very brief. You know. Yeah. So, however, I moved. Uh, I worked for as an engineer for ten years because I later found it was not my forte. You know, I am not a person to sit and design things. So, uh, you know, like engineer, typical engineer. But I thought I would be better in operations. That's my strength. I okay. found out with. Exposure. Then I joined uh, GlaxoSmithKline as a, rather before that I was at the Hall Sim Lanka. Mm -hmm. It was again the multinational as a logistics manager. Moved into uh, GlaxoSmithKline pharmaceutical or the consumer business as a demand manager. So they actually the high uh, management role, but it's more operational, more, more management. With that, uh, you know, I got married and then I had to uh, kind of uh, have a, had a break. Uh, I had to be in Indonesia with my husband and Canada. So there was a break. I could not work. Then I came back and I worked for a few companies again, Sanken Lanka and so on. Then I got an opportunity uh, at Ministry of Vocational and Skills Development. So I actually had an enthusiasm to see what was this whole government, you know, I, it was not a government worker, you know, not a government yeah. option because I was, I had uh, at that time across my 40 years, after 40 years, you cannot be a government permanent servant. Yeah. Um, servant. I was uh, selected purely because of my, uh, you know, the background of the multinational and the corporate uh, culture or the experience as a CEO to the, it's called University College, you know, mm. Sulo. In Sri Lanka, more than one third of young people are just ending up with no higher education because they don't yeah. get the capacity is not enough in this university. So at that time, the government, they have decided to set up these university colleges so that children who really complete the A-levels with good set score could select their own area. For example, fashion design, logistics and maritime, maritime and logistics and the, the travel and tour. You know, it's, it's a different uh, game. You know, it's not just engineering, mathematics, not like that. So it's I was not subject uh, lessons. No, it was very uh, market oriented. Did, jobs. Yeah. So I was the first CEO. I served there for three years. But I must tell you, I was very interesting and I did my best to get these children exposed to the corporate world with all my connections. Thanks to once again, Rotary and all my other social connections. Uh, however, I found that, you know, uh, the culture or the mindset of the youth, you know, when you give a free education, they think they should get, it was a higher national diploma only. Then the children, the youth, they were demanding to get degrees. But then it was impossible, you know, because the thing is, degrees in this country are for some crowd who had to get some kind of a Z score and getting into that. Z score and degree for state and others, it's money. Exactly. And all that. So these people, it was really a, you know, bit of a, you can imagine my, my plight yeah. and I was not the person. Then I got this opportunity. I saw the advertisement on uh, paper on the, uh, there was a global fund. Uh, I'll let you explain. Let me explain later what it is. Ministry of Health. So I believe, uh, actually, my husband and myself both applied because it is a project director post. It was a Geneva funded grant. Uh, I got selected, though, uh, you know, there are several questions. You being an engineer, you don't have anything to do with, you know, medicine or any pharmaceutical background. But I believe I was the best shot at that time because it was a educate. It was interview done by Ministry of Health, Treasury, Geneva, uh, the Global Fund itself. So I was selected. So this my job actually it's called the project director for a global fund. Global fund is a it's a it's an uh, organization in Geneva, uh, supported uh, Sri Lanka for since 2003. It's a grant given to Sri Lanka to eradicate malaria, TB, and HIV. So the time I got in into the job it was 2016. So the level of absorption or the utilization of the grant was very low. It, in fact, it was around 30 percent, you know, I mean, it was very low. So imagine you give $100 to Sri Lanka and we use only 30 and what happened to the 70 bucks is going back, right? So I think that was the analysis done by Ministry of Health. 
they wanted somebody non medical person who has some background and also there was some building or 32 odd buildings half done in north and east it was given by again to build sri lanka after the you know the civil war so since i had the engineering background thanks to sri lanka army at that time the commander mahesh uh, the, you know he he helped us to build all 32 schools within 8 months it was thanks to sri lanka army we built that i mean we retained that money to sri lanka so i managed to help the country rather the uh, ministry of health to retain money up to 89% so you can imagine you know if you really apply what you had we have experience in private sector i think that is where we could do so to answer to your question i think all of us can do this it's not we cannot label uh, saying government ministry of health no they are very intelligent people and they are very very sincere people i must tell you ministry of health from the secretary health onwards you know the ministers change but secretary health onwards everyone for my 6 year uh, life with uh, or the experience with the very very intelligent only thing is their skills and my skills will be different i am an engineer I, i normally do the analysis we do you know financial look at how the is the value is. system also is different from the private sector to the uh, government sector no it it's almost equal i must tell you they really respect who you are since i was a professional and also since i am a person going out of the way it's not just the, you know it's my scope i and and sometimes i you have like setbacks right so because we work with doctors they are talking with the consultant you are working with medical professional whereas you don't have any understanding on these terms but if you they know humbly that you are not an engineer doctor so they try to help me and for them i try to help them you know say that this building if you do with this way it will have cracks so don't spend money on this you know let's go for this and also the engineering team at ministry of health also very much helpful and i i actually i'm so happy that uh, i managed to you know contribute even a small way getting into a government organization which is actually the third largest of yeah. ministry in sri lanka uh, and also the the how i contributed to sri lanka i connected each and every project of ministry of health rotary you i'm know, coming back to that so i'll yeah, be asking that's you. what that that's what i did so i think each and every one of us including yourself sulo we all in our corporate world business world social world but if you really look at we could do something because this kind of it, it's a rare opportunity i got it i know not everyone will get it but i'm so thankful and i i'm sure that it's a, it's it's not a long term it's a every year contract renewal i'm working for the 6th year uh, but hopefully in another few years my contract will be over but i'm so happy that you know it's 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 i understood what the culture and i added some value in my my since your opinion i think that i remember you said i believe that my father and mother was my mentors and my father's discipline came so as an engineer you got your discipline then when you get into a system automatically results comes okay. right okay. so Thank i'll you. come back to so being the chartered civil engineer having all this background joined rotary in 2010 now becoming the district governor of sri lanka and maldives your journey in rotary yes actually i joined rotary in 2000 2000 to 2010 i was with rotary club of colombo midtown which is where 2007 i became the rotary president you know rotary is the like minded people all professional business or corporate people we have some kind of a job or the profession we do we contribute through our vocation for so example i being an engineer i got that opportunity in 2004 when the tsunami hit sri lanka you know uh, rotary uh, given 1.5 billion Uh, us dollars from all over the countries all over the world contributed and we built 24 large schools varying from 18 million rupees to the school the two schools that i got in was 76 million imagine in 2004 to 71 million sri lankan rupees the school with five story building not even in colombo we have with state of the art buildings like you know we built that so what i want to tell you is rotary uh, gave me every time the opportunity whether i was a president then i just after that i i had got an opportunity to represent sri lanka as the group study exchange leader to japan meaning i i led five member team 
who are non rotarians corporate leaders uh, and i went there as as a band ambassador to my country road free sponsored full money and i was hosted by japanese rotarians so amazing you can imagine living with japanese rotarians in their houses stay you know staying in small rooms they have everywhere the discipline wise as you mentioned so sort of, they have put up a national flag i would sleep on the ground sometimes because their houses are very small but they are so amazing people they looked after like my, my own mother my own father you know they so but this is one opportunity i got second opportunity for road tree i got it to serve the community which i it's very close to my heart as i told you of the the very very uh, beginning uh, the, the when i joined road tree uh, i was given the opportunity to travel across sri lanka during the uh, very heavy civil war i hope you remember and all of uh, uh, in sri lanka during to uh, 1990s mm. you know sri lanka uh, was in the process of elimination of polio yes so rotary is the one who actually facilitated yeah. in between you know ltt uh, leader and uh, ministry of health unicef and the who and we managed to got down 600000 us dollars to uh, this uh, eradicate polio so from there i actually represent the world uh, rotary foundation and i am the national polio uh, plus coordinator for last four years now i actually what we are saying in the polio is forgotten but remember polio can come back because two countries we have already in polio africa uh, afghanistan and pakistan any time sri lanka can get it so yeah. this is where sri lankan we sri lankan rotarians we try to get awareness number 2 about the building so you can see fifth more than 15000 children benefited and now most of them are doctors engineers accountants you know they have gone up to that level then came to covid you know i'm just trying to tell you how the opportunities came for all those those are disasters but sri lanka gave me the opportunity through road trees involvement covid hit sri lanka 2020 I remember February or March, the first when the first case was detected. You know, the only organization was invited, the service organization. First time was Rotary. I think it was because I was involved in and uh, our Rotary International past president Ravindran and myself. I remember we sat with uh, Dr. Anil Jaisingh and the team. How we helped? We actually got down the very first PCR machine, uh, more than 70 million. spent test kits everything to mri because at that time we didn't have automated machine yeah. so from there we spent more than 200 million rupees worth of equipment test kits then we came and hit this current that i'll situation. come back to you because i want to ask about your journey on the this thing so being the uh, one of coming from gauls joining colombo or free and doing and now being the this thing but i will come to the sri lanka so the, my second question to you is this because as you said there's 1.2 million networking say and you all have done so much of uh, work for sri lanka the polio is one of the major thing yes as you said the covid also but now sri lanka is in a mess right sure. sri lanka because i remember you all had a rotary walk during the aragale time correct right am yes. i correct yes so being in that but now as sri lankans we have to ensure that sri lanka back on track because our lives are there no point of surviving health disasters if you sure. do not economically survive what do you think rotary role should be thank you i think the very pertinent question solo uh, rotary will never support uh, causes like corruption Uh, or you know malpractices or non governance yeah we will definitely support any country or any people who face you know any disaster that's how you know whether the polio whether it's covid whether it's any other with the hartwell bank or any other disasters in, when wrote uh, really the sri lanka hit we were the first to go and we actually partnered the government but this time yes but we have a responsibility as a citizen sri lanka we actually got so many requests so many donations coming from countries saying you know as a district governor pubudu let's do this something to your country what can i do for you know this is the friendship rotary has built i mean thanks to rotary we all 
getting daily call, not only me, I'm, no, I'm sure that world President Ravi, all everyone was getting, but we were very silent. As you correctly said at the beginning, yes, we joined. Actually, a very peaceful walk. We started on the actually the uh, May 8th, if I remember, the, you know, the whole th started, uh, trouble started on May 9th. Uh, uh, May 8th, we did walk. We actually walked up to the golf is, but we never, we never shout and scream saying anyone to go home. Our, our fight, our, our statement was, we want the governance. We want our country back. We will not stand for uh, corruption or any other uh, misappropriation. So you are promoting the good governance to right. be back. Good governance. We law want accountability. Order. We want law and order. This was our statement. If you, I don't know whether you have seen the newspaper articles. Yeah, yeah. All statements, no, nothing political, but we were very strong. Because, you know, so look, Rotary has uh, authority to ask that. Because Rotary has done so much to this country. So we were connected with 200 countries, 1.2 million people. They are looking at us. What are you all doing as Rotarians? So the Rotary International actually given us, when we check with them, that okay for us to do this. They said, it's totally up to you. It's your country, right? So we stood for that. We walked, 800 of us walked actually. And we very peacefully showed our, uh, you know, uh, our displeasure and we walked out. The next day itself, the whole, you know, the country had that this whole, you know, the yeah. problem came out. Then, however, we, we didn't stop. Our clubs, Rotary clubs across Sri Lanka, more than 70 Rotary clubs, uh, 71, uh, 2,100 Rotarians currently doing enormous work. They are helping community, they are helping the hospitals, they are their own connections. However, as the district governor and the district officials, we thought we must do something nationally big. How can we help? When we analyze, anyway, Sulo, my focus as always, my, my governor's uh, uh, speech, the July 1st, also contained that before this whole thing happened, I really wanted to develop skills of this country, the young people. That was my focus. I said, I'm not doing projects by as a governor. District, we will be helping skills, which I think I'm sure that you will uh, allow me to later explain how that program will go. That program is anyway going on with Ministry of Vocational, uh, with the Philippine um, the Rotarians, um, 500 scholarship, 2 billion project. We have several other, you know, so, so many other. That was my focus on the year. But our focus to help economic situation, the health, the social issue of this country. We came out with a solution. Now, we are partnering with UNICEF. You will hear from 22nd onwards this. We are having our media launch where we are going to announce Sri Lanka. 3.6 billion, 100 million US dollars project initially for six months to bring down essential medicine, partnering with UNICEF. Rotary will be raising funds through our connections, non-Rotarians, Sri Lankan living abroad, who are our school uh, colleagues, alumni, as well as our business partners, colleagues who are living abroad. We are Sri Lankan, but we are living abroad, right? So this is our theme. To help Sri Lanka on bringing down all essential medicine, initially medicine, but then we will be looking into school stationery and also the water purification tablets because you know Sri Lanka is, might have a problem. That's what UNICEF has come out. UNICEF worldwide, Rotary International is partnering this project. We actually do not get any money here involvement. What we want is the accountability and also the clear governance. People can contribute onto the website that Money will be, uh, the medicine will be procured by UNICEF through their global network at the minimum cost, delivered up to Ministry of Health. Ministry of Health will distribute among the hospitals as per their requirement. But we Rotarians sitting in our villages and everywhere, we will be monitoring. We will check whether the, what we have ordered has come. What we ask for people, that is our role always. So this is the very brief program that we are planning to help Sri Lanka. Okay, since they are informing me the time is limited, I want a quick answer for this. President, present president, Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe, uh, is honorary member of Rotary because I saw it on social media. So Rotary, as you said, you think about good governance, ethics and values. 
what is your view? Will that be, uh, I, would, I would say, will that be in line with the new president or will have a... I strongly believe it is. So, Lord, because he, I mean, we Rotary, he's an honor to remember, but he was long standing on to remember of Colombo West Rotary Club, one of the largest Rotary Clubs in Sri Lanka. He was a long standing on to remember. I'm sure that he's, he has been, you know, kind of uh, extended his on membership. The values that we believe, because he, he's a man who was working very closely with Rotary. In fact, when our world president was elected from Sri Lanka, Ravi, I he remember. actually flown, you know, he flew to uh, uh, Korea and we were together and actually he, he represented Sri Lanka. So I think he has the values of Rotary. We, we strongly believe four-way test, Rotary four-way test, core values of Rotary, governance, accountability. I'm sure Mr. President will, uh, you know, with that and all, obviously he has wealth of experience, exposure and we have very high confidence. In fact, this, this particular project also, we are working very closely with him. We want uh, our country to establish this governance uh, in future. So there's quick 10 answers and ones are true or false, are the yes or no. Uh, you can, uh, some if you do not want to answer, you can pass sure, it, sure. but let it be. So Rot first question, Rotary focus on getting more women as members sure. because women leadership proven results than male leadership. True or false? True. Rotary is a business networking. True or false? True. Sri Lankan Parliament nationalists should conclude 30% of women in Parliament. Yes or no? Yes. Private universities should exist and it should have ranking system. Yes or no? Yes. Children above 15 years should allow to date so that child abuse and statutory rape can be avoided. Yes or no? Partly yes. Abortion is a woman right. It should be allowed. Yes or no? Partly yes. Marital rape should be considered as an act and violent act of violence. Yes or no? Uh, I am neutral on that question. Okay. Young youth should be mentored and guided to take up country leadership. Yes or no? Definitely yes. If you get a chance to get married again at the age of twenty, will you remarry again? Definitely not. If you're born again, will you like to be born as a man? I don't think, uh, yes, but I, I, I prefer to be who I am, whether a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. Okay, thank you, well done. Thank you. So I think two, uh, one question, you, didn't, you were neutral, partly was answered yes or no for two questions, but your answers were consistent, I think yes. As women, sometimes we have to be neutral sure, also, sure. right? So thank you, uh, Pubudu, for joining Plenty with Sulo and sharing your journey uh, as a Rotarian, as the new governor elected, and also as a Sri Lankan citizen, as a product of Sri Lankan free education, and who has contributed back to Sri Lanka. So uh, thank you again. And uh, if you have any final thoughts, you can share. Yeah, just wanted to say a big thank you to you. And I know that you personally and of, of course with the capacity of uh, Wim, uh, you what work you are doing and very great. I'm so happy at, uh, you know, part of you at least in this small way. And please keep uh, continuing your good work. Uh, and I hope, uh, you know, all the blessings for you uh, in, from all of us Rotarians and as a citizen of Sri Lanka. To all those of you, what my whole message is, doesn't matter what country you want to do for us. Do what you can do for the country. Let's do that. I think you will be happy just before you depart from this world. You say, I did it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Today, our guest was Pubudu Disoisa, Rotary International District Governor for Sri Lanka and Maldives. Be tuned to Plenty with Sulo.